Hello and uh, good afternoon uh, to one and all. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Mohammad Salim. I am a second year PG resident in the Department of Radio Diagnosis, JNMC Aligarh. And uh, the topic of today's presentation is actually a rare case of cervical neuroendocrine tumor. Um, so a bit about introduction. Primary or secondary neuroendocrine tumors of the female genitalia, they are rare. And uh, among these gynecological neuroendocrine tumors, uh, cervical small cell carcinoma and ovarian carcinoids are the most common. Uh, as far as uterine neuroendocrine tumors are concerned, extremely few cases of uh, uterine neuroendocrine tumors have been reported. Uh, the, recorded, the reported endometrial neoplasms with uh, neuroendocrine differentiation essentially include small cell carcinoma and endometrial carcinoma with neuroendocrine cells. So they have an annual incidence of uh, about 7 in a lakh and uh, they are a very heterogeneous group of neoplasms uh, derived from the neuroectoderm, neural crest and the endoderm. So now starting off with the case discussion. So this was a 65 year old female who came with complaint of postmenopausal bleeding and lower abdominal pain for the past four months. Uh, she had no other uh, comorbidities. On examination, her vitals were stable. Her abdomen, uh, it was soft, tender and no mass was palpable. Her vaginal examination showed uh, bulky uterus with a polypoidal growth in the cervix, uh, which bled on touch. So moving on to the imaging findings, uh, her MRI uh, showed a bulky uterus with a heterogeneously enhancing lesion in the cervix with a restricted diffusion. Uh, however, no evidence of any parametrial involvement was noted. So we have the few MRI images here. Uh, the first image is an axial T2 weighted and the second is an axial pre-contrast T1 weighted image in which we can see that there is a heterogeneous lesion involving the cervix region. Uh, this is an oblique T2 weighted image and we see that there is no significant involvement of the parametrium here. Uh, there is mild uh, post-contrast enhancement uh, as we can see in the second image. So here we have a diffusion weighted image in which we can see that the lesion involving the cervix uh, is actually showing diffusion restriction, uh, which we can confirm on the ADC. So these were non-specific imaging findings really, as far as uh, uh, mass of cervix was concerned. So uh, the patient further went on to have uh, a histopath and uh, Histopath on microscopy revealed a tumor composed of sheets of oval to round cells having eosinophilic cytoplasm and a high NC ratio. Uh, focal pseudorosites, papillary pattern and peripheral palisading is seen. On histopathology, a large cell neuroendocrine carcinoma was uh, confirmed. Uh, immunohistochemistry had positive markers for synaptophysin and EMA. Uh, and the stage was uh, given as a T1B uh, with uh, no nodal or metastatic uh, deposit. So this was uh, the case. And now coming on to discussion, uh, neuroendocrine tumors of uh, uterus and cervix are quite rare. Uh, one of the common site of neuroendocrine uh, tumors in the gynecological tract is the cervix. And uh, these cervical neuroendocrine neoplasms are classified into cervical neuroendocrine tumors and high-grade cervical neuroendocrine carcinomas uh, based on the KI67 and the mitotic index. The small cell variant is the most common variant. Uh, roughly about 80% among the cervical neuroendocrine neoplasms followed by large cell variant as was in our case and uh, differentiated cervical neuroendocrine tumors. Only a few cases of uh, low-grade uh, cervical neuroendocrine tumors have been reported in the literature. Uh, neuroendocrine carcinomas may also coexist with adenocarcinomas or squamous cell carcinoma, and the survival clinical behavior of such cases is determined by the neuroendocrine component. 
these were the references that were used thank you